how far, Mr. Uh, Deputy, uh, Deputy Foreign Minister, are you ready to go to, to make sure that Ukrainian sovereignty is upheld in the eastern part of your country? Because, as, as you know, for all practical purposes, Crimea, at least for now, is lost. Our message is very clear that we are going to defend ourselves. We are going to defend ourselves against the threat that Russia, Russia is uh, continuing their efforts and uh, their aggressive politics against Ukraine. That's why, you know, under these dramatic uh, conditions, we are going to fight, we are going to defend ourselves unless uh, the situation is, is uh, come down. Uh, if Russia crosses this line, we will, we will defend our motherland, we will defend our statehood and independence. You believe Russian paramilitary special forces troops are still occupying, still inside parts of eastern Ukraine? Yes, we do. We do. We have uh, all necessary proofs for that, that uh, these people are inspired by Russians, these people are financed by Russians and organized by them. So, uh, but our clear intention is to hold peaceful talks and to fill all necessary obligations that we are taking uh, in Geneva. That was our fundamental principle, and that was our clear Doesn't stance. look like those peaceful talks are doing anything. That's another proof of the aggressive politics of Russians. They have to stick to their obligations, and that's what we are saying. But they're say saying, the Russians, including the president of Russia, in blunt terms, if you deal militarily with these elements in eastern Ukraine, they will, they will respond. They might send in troops into eastern Ukraine, formal troops, and they have 40,000 right on the border. Yeah, that's a great, great danger. But the problem is that we have also to protect our people against terrorists that occupied our buildings, that seized our premises, and so on. And those people endanger our Ukrainian citizens. How the, uh, normally the state should behave in this situation to protect people? The only thing is that we would like to avoid casualties, because this is part of our vision and our philosophy. We don't need any bloodshed. We just simply want to but stop this aggression. I want aggression. to bring Nicholas Kristof and Jim Shudo into this conversation. But you realize, of course, that military to military, Ukraine is really no match for Russia. I will say in that way. Unfortunately, uh, we, uh, our positions uh, have been weakened by previous regime. But no matter with that, Ukrainians will defend our, uh, their country. Right. And that's because of passion. That's because of our dignity. Because our revolution that happened on Maidan was about dignity. We, we fought for our values, and we want Russians to share the same values because we don't want to be enemies with them. We want them to follow our case. And maybe that's, that's the point why Putin is afraid of Ukraine, because this example may give Russians an alternative of this so-called democracy right. as they have in Russia, which is not the democracy, but the criminal economy that rules their politics. Mr. Lukivsky, hold on for a moment. Nicholas Kristof, you just came back from Ukraine. Uh, it looks like this situation could really dramatically escalate. Is there a way to, for everyone to back down and see a more peaceful resolution? Um, I don't know. I must say that I th you get the sense that in the next couple of days we have a crucial turning point for Ukraine, that the government seems to be now more committed to using force uh, to try to address what it regards as terrorism in eastern Ukraine. And certainly the Ukrainian population, I think, would like to see the government be more aggressive. There's been real frustration that the government hasn't done more of that. On the other hand, um, that may indeed lead Russia to uh, send these 30 or 40,000 troops across the border. And I've been very worried by what seems to be some signs that Russia may be laying the groundwork uh, for trying to legitimize that kind of uh, invasion, at least to those who are going to be, I mean, obviously, around the world, people aren't going to accept there's any legitimacy to that. But uh, domestically and among people more sympathetic, there seems to be some attempt to do that. Because, you know, Jim Shudo, we know that U.S. officials believe what the Russians did in Crimea could be a, an example of what they might try to do in eastern Ukraine. Well, you see them laying the same groundwork, right? this pretext that, that ethnic Russians were under threat in Crimea used to, to bring military action there. And you, ha you have the same argument being made uh, in eastern Ukraine. And, and that's, that's a real concern of the administration. The administration has struggled to find the cost 
that is too much for Russia to bear, right? You started with these sanctions against individuals, one state institution, Secretary Kerry, President Obama talking about another round of sanctions in the similar vein. The trouble is, and they want that next round to escalate the cost for Russia. The trouble is the situation on the ground is escalating more quickly uh, than those costs are for Russia. What do you need, Deputy Foreign Minister, from the United States? You're here. Obviously, you have a re you're requesting additional assistance. What do you want President Obama, Secretary Kerry, to authorize for Ukraine? We are grateful for the support of the international community, including the United States. That's a clear, strong support, and we are happy that we have strong partners in this case. We, uh, we are thinking and we, we consider more economic pressure on Russia, sanctions, sanctions that will influence the situation and not only some, you know, occasional people. Uh, we need uh, more strong uh, military cooperation. Weapons? Uh, we definitely need more means to defend Ukraine. You want U.S. weapons? We need uh, uh, knowledge, we need uh, weaponry, we need all other issues and means that could be used to, for defense, for defensive purposes. That's, you have a list of weapons you want, uh, tanks, uh, armored personnel carriers, uh, helicopters, what do you want? Me, let, let me, yes, that's an interesting question, but let me not specify that, because the problem not of my answer, but the problem is of the situation on the ground. We are trying to do everything possible to calm down the situation, to de-escalate that. But we're also working hard to protect Ukrainians right. and protect our country. Nicholas Kristof, does it make sense right now? Because the Obama administration is resisting providing lethal weapons to uh, Ukraine. Well, you know, whether, uh, I tend to think we should be careful about providing lethal weapons. But there are three things that we can do. Uh, to a greater degree than we have. And one is uh, non-lethal support. Partly that's financial support for Ukraine at a time when it is in economically desperate shape. And that would be uh, tremendously important for Ukraine economically and also a great morale booster. We can provide non-lethal military support as well, bulletproof vests, uh, uh, fuel, uh, so that it can uh, raise the cost of Russian aggression, things like that. Uh, I think we can also uh, do much more in being very clear about the economic sanctions would be applied to Russia, and in particular, banking sanctions are the things that would be most devastating. I think we need to be pretty clear that Russia's uh, banks would be frozen out of the global banking system if there is a, a real invasion. And finally, we can use the bully pulpit, I think, a little more than we have. You know, I make clear that, you know, Vladimir Putin is, is uh, out there trying to defend the interests of Russian speakers everywhere in the world except in Russia, and he's jeopardizing their future by uh, talking about invading Ukraine. You hearing, uh, Jim Shudo, the administration getting ready to tighten up those sanctions, impose stricter ones? Certainly not. They are going to impose stricter ones, but in the economic uh, sphere and similar to that first round. Individuals, maybe some institutions, they want it to be a step up, but it's not going to be a dram dramatically a step up. And there is no consideration, to, to my knowledge and from officials I've spoken to, about direct military aid. You do hear from some Republican lawmakers, for instance, Mike Rogers, you were speaking to just a couple days ago, about things like better intelligence sharing. There's been some progress, but he wants more. And even possibility of training troops. But, but weapons not on the table at this point.